Hi there, and welcome to Footyology, the show that doesn't tug its forelock to any head of state from the other side of the globe whose birthday was actually two months ago, but still loves any excuse for a long weekend full of AFL action. I'm Rowan Connolly, with me is my co-host Mark Fine, and together we're going to bow at the feet of a big round 12, hailing the majesty of some terrific team performances, and perhaps bestowing a knighthood upon a certain Geelong midfielder who played one of the great individual games of the modern era. We'll be joined by John Pyrrhic with enough footy news to please Her Majesty, plus fill several editions of the paper and a few souvenir mugs besides. We're back with all the segments that have made this show a royal family favourite for such a long time now. Rounds of our lives, key ball Q&A, the credibility ladder and the rant off. We might even throw in a gratuitous corgi or two, preferably grilled and served with a side salad. So let's get cracking and well may we say God save the Queen, because nothing will save you viewers from Mark Fine's steely gaze. G'day, Finey. We're not amused. Yeah, you're not. Are you a royalist or a republican? <laughs> I, I like her. I reckon she's yeah? all right. Yeah. She's into her, what, 10th decade now? She's I, a, I hope she gets the ton. Yeah? Uh, it would be terrible if she... I don't know. Run got, out for, I'm a republican, so run out for 99 sort of suits me okay. What's, what's that? Getting knocked I, I, over I, by a car three I days before her 100th birthday? I don't know. Well, eaten by a corgi. Wouldn't it be great if she got to 100, though, if she gets to... Send herself a telegram. <laughs> Saved on postage. Congratulations. Thank you. Highlight of the uh, round 12 for you? Well, you're actually going to be part of the highlight of the round because... Oh, no. Must have been... Uh, did you see GWS Sydney? I did. Did you see the guy that won $100,000? I did. You are going to go for $100,000. I've done this to scale. If you get this in, it's a 100th scale, yeah. so I'll give you 1000 bucks. Not a chance oh. in hell. Um, no, <laughs> big budget not, on this show. We obviously couldn't afford that. It was great though, wasn't it? It yeah, was it amazing. Was. Yeah, was biggest amazing? cheer all day. And uh, imagine if Mark Zaymo was going for it. <laughs> <laughs> Money would be safe. He would have had to pay them. And well, uh, it was a great round because yeah. St Kilda, my team got a bit of um, salvation and teams that I have slated in my childhood as the bad boys of football, Essendon and Carlton and Collingwood, well, my team gets smashed on a weekly basis now. It's getting mm, a bit boring to be honest. Yeah, yeah, I'm beginning to know how you feel. Felt. Nine big games across four long days. It was a marathon that began with a whimper, and if you were Collingwood, ended with one, but was nonetheless full of incident. Let's look at the pick of it all, in hot or not. <laughs> I, um, I led off last week. You're going to lead this week. Sam... I think Jay Reid hadn't played for three years. Former Western Bulldog with GWS, lost in the kneeful, came back. Obviously, he's been playing well because they brought him back for a big game against Sydney, kicked a, a really important goal, and the, the team just got around. I, I just think it's a great story of persistence, and they feel more like a club now. All the players obviously really like the bloke because of what he's been through at the club. And it's all about the club and the player. and it, it, it was real to me, and I really liked it. And well done, Sam. Jay Reid. How many players of similar names do we have now? There's, quite, there's two Nathan Browns, there two is. Sam Reeds. Mm -hmm. There's someone else, isn't there? Yeah, no, there's more. There's two Mitch Browns. Two Mitch Browns. Two Josh Kennedys. Mm -hmm. Not bad. Noah's Ark. Two A veritable Scott Noah's Ark. Two Scott Thompsons. I think I've got, you always I think I've got Yeah, them. no, you're good. You're good at that. Okay, um, my lead... Uh, hot or not this week. Uh, hot is Melbourne. Um, fantastic performance at the G yesterday. I was lucky enough to be there to see it. It's the sort of stage on which we've seen them fall over so often previously. Hadn't won a Queen's birthday game against the Pies since 2007. And um, they just blew them off the park. Fantastic second quarter, seven goals, and just held them, held them at bay. Their midfield dominated. How about Dean Kent? <coughs> He's really He's emerging a as a player. Strong player and, yeah. and likes a goal. Yeah. I think you've got to be able to play if you've got sleeves of tats. It's, I've, I've got a bit of an anti tat thing happening. I oh, know, I oh, know. No, it was a very good. Don't show it again. Not mine. It was a good weekend for tattoos. Who else? Tim Membry. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's coming of age too. <laughs> but look, demons across the board, uh, you know, they're really, but we do the credibility ladder. They're certainly starting to fly up the rungs of the credibility ladder. And. Um, you know, as a scene setter for what's in store for them over the next few years, great experience for them. You're up. Not hot. Yep. I mean, I mean this is a. There's an example. Mark J. Mars kicking. Do you see that? We've got footage of it. The set we do of, have monitors here. Any time you'd like to turn them on, guys, feel free. But uh, yeah, I do recall Mark J. Mars kicking. 
that was so rank amateur. It was it almost as though he'd never kicked a football before in <laughs> his <laughs> life. The, the first one was probably it was just terrible. The worst kick of the season so far. Except it got bested. Did you see Sam Gilbert try and kick a cross ground yeah. against Carlton? You know, he tried to do the switch. The ball travelled 20, 25 metres, but he switched it. The, it. It sort of just drifted right back into Carlton players' hands. And then there was another kick that was just as bad. Bachelor had a shot from 50 metres out. It didn't go 20 metres. He, he just sort of missed the ball. From so the it, it, so Whitfield, you... from, miss, Whitfield missed from the goal square. Okay, so you're not his kicking in general. Yeah, especially just... especially when Cam Smith can kick a, tr a conversion from the byline when his feet go from underneath <laughs> him and he lands on his backside. Our blokes were terrible on the weekend, the <laughs> AFL guys. All right, very good. I'm coming up with a knot now, and it's Friday Night Stinkers. Now, we've had a few of them this year. Uh, coincidentally or not, two of them involve Essendon. Port Adelaide Essendon, shocking Friday night game. West Coast Richmond, I think the week after, almost as bad. North Melbourne, Richmond in Hobart. All we got to hear about was how cold it was all night. I mean, well, why would you pr schedule a game like that for a Friday night in Hobart? And then topped, of course, by the absolute debacle of Essendon Hawthorne Friday night. Now, Scott Lucas on SEN came up with the, again, not the first time, but the flexible fixture proposal. The more I think about it, the more I think it makes sense. I mean, as long as there's enough notice, you've got some idea, say, six weeks out, whether a game's going to be reasonably entertaining or not. Now, I don't see that the uh, you know the uh, travel packages people buy. Why can't they be flexible enough to cater to it? I, I remember in the nineties, shifting games was the ultimate compliment you could pay to a team. You know, to a bigger stadium. Yeah. Yeah. So a, a Footscray or a, a Fitzroy, even a, a, a North Melbourne, would have a little run of good form, and they'd be told another win, and we might transfer the round seventeen game against Collingwood from. Arden Street to VFL Park. It was yeah, no, it, now, it now, was flexible and it was good. Now we're locked in through the you know the whims of some Johnny Come Latelys who want to have a long weekend in Melbourne. Yeah, and it's written in stone because of the corporate commitments. Because, exactly. Because you know Jack McMillionaire can only eat sirloin of beef <laughs> on a Friday night. On Saturday night he is unavailable. I've had the beef sirloin. It's not great. Okay, last one. I never thought I'd say this. Hot, and I really mean it, is Jack Watts. He's now an acceptable AFL footballer. Not a superstar, but a damn acceptable AFL footballer. Do you know this year, he's kicked 24 goals in 12 games. His best haul since making his debut in 2009 for a season was nine to, uh, 2013. 22 goals, and he's already surpassed that with 12 games played and 10 to go. No, he's been good. Very, good con very consistent a good season. Footballer. But... I think I can top that hot with my own last hot, Patrick Dangerfield. In 33 years of covering football, I've awarded three 10 out of 10s. This was my third Saturday night. The perfect game. 48 disposals, 13 clearances, 10 centre bounce clearances, unheard of, 83% disposal efficiency, two goals, 11 inside 50s. It was Dangerfield versus North Melbourne. Actually, that's not fair because he had a lot of teammates who played well, but... The man is a gun, and Selwood and Dangerfield, or as I've now dubbed them, Dangerwood, is threatening to become one of the great sporting du duos in Australian history. I like Selfield. They're a great <laughs> pair of players. <laughs> you're, but you're a Geelong sycophant, because your other two tens were Geelong. They were too, yes, and they were uh, Joel Selwood, funnily enough, seven years ago, and Gary Ablett Sr. for that 14 goals and a losing game. Do you know the first ever... Sun score. Sun, they had the sun, when it was just the sun, used to have the sun score. I did sun score, yeah. Do you know who the first ever 10 was? I don't. It was extraordinary. Who Ricky was Quaid. Ricky Quaid. Actually, I've got a funny memory of that. Jeez, we're old. Time for a short break now. When we come back, our news hound smells crisis in a northern football state and takes a look at a coaching succession plan that seems to have delivered everything but the success. But first, let's catch up with the post-game press conferences where Grant Dickinson won't be taken for a fool, which is why he never sits with the other journos. And while they're asking the Dorothy Dixers, he's asking the pressing questions. Jose, Grant Dickinson from Footyology, is there any truth to the rumour you might be coaching the Brisbane Lions next year? <laughs> The AFL side, yeah. Because we heard... Brisbane Lions? Yeah. 
Nej, vad ska jag ta Is a bit it's in Portuguese or Brazilian? It's in Brisbane. Oh, it's in Brisbane. <laughs> Welcome back to Footyology and the news that even talking footy has been taking the piss out of us. Well, How's that? Well, I <laughs> saw it last night. Uh, we're, we're working on getting some footage, not available yet, the copyright and all that stuff, but uh, we were in the uh, Say That Again segment at the end. Well, it, well what happened was uh, I decided to be a smart ass and talk about how we weren't former players, but at least we could string two words together and then about... Five seconds later, I mangled my words. So, uh, so that, did they say anything about me? No, I they haven't got around to you yet. I like talking for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, well played. Get, keep getting Just stuff something up, and you'll get on there. Well, <laughs> yeah. well played, guys. Someone said we should rattle off a quote from Oscar Wilde on being talked about, but uh, I reckon unless he's a brother of Collingwood's Jason Wilde, we're not interested. It's Could, a footy show. I hope he kicked better. I hope Oscar kicked better than Jason. <laughs> I reckon he. I'm tipping he might have. <laughs> Let's just introduce our news hand, a playwright and poet of the football variety who can seamlessly turn a phrase while turning out cracking exclusives in tomorrow's news today. G'day, JP. Hey, and Ron. sorry, look, I'm sorry I do that mock sort of <laughs> serious right. thing, but I don't know. It's just, it's just yeah. got frontline written all over it. This segment. Talk about mangling things at the moment. Well, that's probably the case with the Brisbane Lions, isn't it? Another heavy loss at the weekend, this time to the Fremantle Dockers. There's more speculation about the future of coach Justin Lepich, and he was asked about this post-match on Saturday. Oh, here we go again. <laughs> oh, God, God, can we stop these silly questions? I'm getting a bit over it, to be perfectly honest. What would you ask someone if they're going to keep their job? First of all, it is... If you said that to someone on the street, it's a disgusting thing to say. Second of all, ask someone who decides it, not me. So that's the answer to it. So stop asking me. Ask Lee, ask Swanee. I've got a job for 18 months to do, and I'm doing it. Can we finish it right now? Done. Thank you. Right. So, so he's getting, he's getting... It, it didn't take too kindly to being asked about his future, which is probably fair enough. He said, you know, if a person on the street was asked about, you know, are you going to be sacked? It probably be, wouldn't be a good look. So. so let's do media management here. What yep. should he have said when asked whether he felt his coaching future was on the line? Well, I think he handled it pretty well because he finished off by saying, go and ask someone who's in charge, like Swanee or Lee Matthews. So they're the two guys that ultimately make the call on him. Yeah. So, But at the moment, like he's, he only had 12 wins, 44 losses, a winning percentage of 21%. <laughs> Is it too easy, though, to, to blame him finally, or do they need more resources in the football department? Would he be better off if, say, a Neil Baum or a... You know, an, an experienced football manager was by his side. Yes, dead set correct because they are under-resourced in the football department. Um, I read an SMS, not to me, but I won't name the champion, a former Brisbane champion, and not somebody who takes any pleasure in the club's current situation, suggesting that their young talent is undercoached and left to their own devices. Mm. Did you know in the NEFL on the weekend they were playing Southport Sharks with 16 Brisbane Lions listed players? Southport had seven injuries to their best 22, and Southport defeated Still them by bad. eight goals. Yeah. This, uh, I've got a big butt with this, and I, I've got You've every... Got a big butt with everything, so I've got, I've got uh, cigarette butts, usually. I, I've got uh, plenty of sympathy for Lepper, but I just look at that list. I reckon it's a much more talented list than the performances mm. indicate. They've got plenty of senior talent. They've got young guys who've been around the, the scene for quite a while now. They pushed Sydney to within three points when they decided to switch on. And the, the most damning from a coaching perspective thing about that performance on Saturday was the fact they came out, kicked the first three goals, and the moment they were challenged, they just turned it up. That's now, been the case all season, Well, that to it? me, yeah. Yeah, that's got coaching issue written all yeah, over it. Too many players in reverse. Lewis yeah. Taylor wins the rising star. Gone Morgan, backwards. Gone backwards. Yeah. And Daniel Sa Rich Sa won the rising star. Well, Sa Sam Mayers. Speaking of Lewis Taylor, we've been told that he wants five hundred thousand dollars to remain per season to remain at the club from next year. Yeah, too There's much. some interest in Victorian teams, but not at that price. I've been told the Lions they won't match that offer, and if he really wants to come home, well, they'll they'll try and get a trade done. Well, Adelaide definitely won't take it. Yeah, because Adelaide, because Eddie Betts is going to win a car for goal of the year, and he oh, doesn't. They don't need him. That's for sure. And he doesn't <laughs> want Lewis Taylor to smash yeah. it up. Who would you take now, Lewis Taylor or Bontempelli? In terms of the rising star. Uh, Next question. Really <laughs> Next um, at Collingwood, well, a lot's been said and written about the Pies this year. I'm not too sure what else can be said or how bad they're travelling at the moment. There's general, a general feeling, though, Mason Cox probably deserves a spell in the VFL. 
he sort of slipped in the last few weeks. He I wasn't I very disagree. good, particularly against Melbourne. I disagree. Perhaps entirely. bring back Travis Cloak. I perhaps pick the team properly. Wait till my rant, but yep. Mason Cox's benefit to the side is that he can take his turn in the ruck, saving them from playing an extra ruckman. Do you realise I did a, a mathematical last night? The, who are the five best ruckmen in the comp? Well, they're Goldstein, Gorn, etc. Nat Nui, Mumford, and Tom Hickey. He's kicked more goals than all of them, with 13 in eight games. They've all played 12 games. Yep. And even the resting ruckman, he's kicked more goals than. Yep. He's kicked 13 goals and he rucks capably in twice. Just a quick one on the pies. Uh, yes or no answer from both of you. Is Nathan Buckley coaching for his future in the second half of this season? Yes. Yep. It's already... His, his future should be written stone, but it is. I just think it's that he's coaching on for some reason. I'm just going to expand quickly on that. I don't want to be Mr yeah. Hardass today, but the number of young players they've got whose performances and development has plateaued, that says coaching mm. issue again, mm. I reckon. And just a couple of things around the grounds. So Brad Scott's hopeful that Andrew <coughs> Swallow will play in Friday night's blockbuster against Hawthorne. We obviously saw him crash to the turf hard on Saturday night and has concussion. The Kangaroos are also hopeful for all their other injured guys can get up. Um, Dal Santo and Cunnington, the two important ones there. Yeah. Um, we've also, the Essendon, Draga keep, Essendon Saga sorry, keeps dragging on at the moment. Um, player managers and the like want a meeting with the, the AFL and Essendon and their insurer and the like to try and fast track this in terms of the compensation. There's real worries that this could drag on now into 2017. Oh, that'd make a change, yes, and so <laughs> dragging on. Who, who would have thought that would nice have? Nice five-year deal, hey? Can I ask you a question? Why did Essendon re-sign Bell Chambers? Uh, yeah, I've got my doubts about that one as well. Well, he the Bombers have owed said they, they owed all their players that extra year they missed out on. So this, this is one of those deals as well. He was also contracted for next year. Yeah. So it's honouring the year he's missed out. It's a footy club, not a charity. But, um, yeah, I guess it's a moral. Lew Lewenberg has Oh, good. he's been good. Yeah, yeah. he's been good. Thanks, JP. We'll see you back for the uh, credibility ladder. Thanks, nice guys. suit again, as always. Let's get to another break. And hey, hey, I've got something for you oh. as we go to the break. Okay. How about the crowd at Carlton St Kilda? 47. I know, it was a ripper. 700. Yeah. And as much as they were mainly Carlton people finding it hard to get in for the start of the game, a three quarter time when the Saints were 41 points ahead. Have a look at these rats leaving the sinking ship oh. and they could not get out quick enough as we go to the break. Ordinary people do that. Welcome back and we've struck a chord with our latest segment, a trip back through time for those of us who remember who did what on a cold winter's day at Moorabbin in 1977 but who can't remember what we did five minutes ago. Round 12 over the years has had some big moments, some big milestones, big performances and some big controversies. And you're going to get a taste of them all right now because like a stick of chewing gum that broke your teeth when you bought a new packet of Scanlon's footy cards, so are the rounds of our lives. Okay, number five this week, Fanny. I've done this just for you. We're going back to round 12, 2007. The venue is Subiaco. The occasion, Robert Harvey's 350th game. No man has played more for St Kilda. And what a fantastic performance he turned on. 30 possessions. The Saints, memorable day, Fanny. I'll let you lead the charge here. But this was a, an unexpected victory. And they did it for Banger. They did uh, it's a wonderful footballer, self-effacing, incredibly durable, a runner, a champion, but his milestones were in the wrong place. 350th at Subiaco, and his 300th was the night St Kilda got beaten in the preliminary final oh, by yes. Port Adelaide. When he ran onto the ground for the 300, the Port Adelaide hierarchy played the Port Adelaide song, and I was sitting amongst some Port Adelaide bikey types, and they stood up and they gave it to him, absolutely the wrong place to play your 300 so a super footballer but just didn't quite time his milestones at the right venue and the thing i always loved about harvey is how understated he was so sort of self-effacing punched over at all the stoppages as though he yeah. was spent but off the field and too like he is one of the i think he's actually underrated as a player in the context of all-time greats he, he was a great player evasive 
tough. I mean, he got crunched, but he never, you never saw him down on the ground. He was never in a heap. And his kicking was underrated because he, would, he didn't kick the ball hard. He wasn't a goal kicker, but he used to float the ball up to the forwards beautifully. Set, he was very good at setting up a little 30-metre pass for, for Tony Lockett, Stuart Lowe, and later on Nick Rewalk. Just it, He'd float the ball up, and I like people who kick like that. Great day for the Saints. I knew you'd enjoy that yeah, one. thank you. Okay. Thanks, I appreciate it. <clears throat> well, number four, Tiger fans doing it uh, tough these days, so this one's for them. We're going back to, not all that far, 2010, round 12 at the MCG. It's the Tigers. The opponent is a hapless West Coast, really struggling at this point of the season. What's going to happen? The Eagles get to the MCG with trepidation, but unfortunately they run into a red-hot Jack Rewalt. Let's throw to the action. Under this, can't get a fly at it. Back of the pack. This could be the perfect start. Strolls in, kicks the goal, and Richmond are away. Directly out. Jack Rewald, three goals. West Coast Eagles yet to score. Good Rewald here. Rewald's in a one-on-one. -on -one. About to go. Schofield oh. with him. <laughs> Rewald, too good. Edwards sends it in the Jack Rewald direction. Can't get a jump at it. Front of the pack. Tries to crumb it. Could go off the ground. Put him down for eight. There'll be a huge roar. There's a new king of Tigerland. Rewalt, Schofield. Rewalt! <laughs> for number 10. The new hero has double figures. I reckon. Uh, look, he, he's had a. He's been a great spearhead for a long time now. But I reckon that that was a day I went. Geez, you know, this guy is one of the greats of the modern era, really, in terms of goal kicking. Look, he kicked ten goals, but he just doesn't. He's not a goal kicker anymore. I know he plays. His roles changed. He's, he plays for much further up the ground, but he, he's not hungry for a goal. Mm. He, he doesn't yearn a goal as he used to. I, I think they miss something by him not kicking as many goals. I still, uh, I know this is by the by bit, but the Eagles that year, wooden spoon. What happened? And then the next year they were in a plenary final. And then the year after they were disappointing, and then the year yeah. after they were good, which was last year. And have you guess what this year will be? Yeah, well, something about Western Australian footy culture, and I'll come to that in my rant. Something about something comparable to a, a lift or a working girl's knickers. Not going there at all. Number three, let's go back all the way to 2015 and it's Melbourne playing down at Cadinia Park. Yes, I'm going to call it Cadinia Park, not Simmons Stadium. Now this has been a very, very unhappy venue for the Demons. They've won there only once in the previous 27 years. Everyone thinks they're in for a pounding. Let's have a look at what happens. Giving it to Lumumba. First goal absolutely vital here towards Gorn. He had to beat a couple and he couldn't do that. Dawes with strength and skill gives it to Jones. Nate Jones shrugs one tackle. Steadies, shoots and goals. What a start. Gorn against Blitzars. Riley, he's given them something with sub. Vince, sidestep was good. Kick was splendid. Kick was outstanding. Colin <laughs> Jasny touched it just over the line. Final now, I would have thought. We can kick this. Strikes it pretty well. Dagger to the heart. Oof. This wasn't the script. Melbourne came here, wrote their own script. Turned a love story into a horror show. But they've broken the drought. A lot. It was there today. He'd definitely get the three votes, I would have thought, Jared. He was uh, seven. That was a great win. That was the day we realised Max Gorn was something. Didn't the light bulb go on for him that day? Yeah. And uh, it hasn't really looked back. I was going to say, Melbourne, they didn't really follow up that win. They were disappointing, no, right. basically, after that. But I reckon, you know, if they do continue to emerge, as it now looks like, we'll probably look back at that game and say that was the first sign that this side actually was building towards something pretty good. Momentous grandfall. That's where Dean Bailey... Oh, of course, yeah. his last game. That well, like uh, the 186. Yeah, that... that, that Ferocious thrashing that they received. Second highest in uh, thrashing in history. Yeah. They were in the end only of the de Only denying well. themselves <laughs> yes. their own record. <laughs> yeah, well, like I said, a very unhappy hunting ground for them, and uh, they made short work of it in, in that occasion. So fantastic for the Demons. Kudos to them. Okay, you're going to love this one. A very famous moment. Number two, 
We haven't got audio, unfortunately. We'll have to talk you through it. But uh, people of our vintage will have no trouble recalling this. 1977, it should be pointed out, was perhaps the wettest winter of football we've ever seen. Grounds more resembled cow paddocks than AFL venues. And this round 12 was arguably the wettest day football's ever seen. They probably should have called the whole thing off, but everyone splashed around. What a soft... It was a 70s mate. Well, have a look at this. Here we go. Anyway, I'm going to get you to take this back, guys, because we need to talk you through it. Can we play this clip again? Are you oh, going to yeah. let me play it again? North Melbourne is... Set it up. ...level with Hawthorne. Correct. Here's Malcolm Blight running into goal. The sign's about to go. He gets pushed, pushed in the fair back. Fair square in the back. Fair and square in the back. So, scores are now level because he's kicked a point. Now, but for, for the younger listeners, that man dressed as a butcher is in fact the goal umpire. Yes, and the umpire has awarded him free kick. Right. So this now, he, the, a goal will he's win the game. He's the question. Yes, do you want another kick? Yeah. Malcolm, of course, says yes, I want to win the game. So hang on, North, North were a point down. Yes. So he had the draw, he, he, did, he decided not to take the draw, and the man that kicked the great goal against Carlton... Can, sorry, guys, can we have a look at that one more time? It's worth, come on, it's special. It's worth looking at one more time, surely. There are points, Here we go again. So okay. there are point, a point, point down. down. He's pushed in the back. He also bowls over a, another player like a 10 Malcolm, bowling ball. would you like another kick? What yes, you, thank you, Mr. Umpire. What do you reckon, Smith? Umpire Kevin Smith. He has knocked back the draw. It's now one point the difference. But here's the key. Have a look at the people twirling the umbrellas behind the goal. They put him off. It makes it difficult to kick when people twirl umbrellas. The twirling umbrella puts him off. Oh, Malcolm Blyde, what have you done? He's almost hit the crest oh, lager going side. berserk. I like all the ads, crest lager. Of course, it should be uh, stated here that North Melbourne did go on and win one of the great premierships after drawing with Collingwood in the grand final. So it wasn't... Uh, and that lady's... Umbrella was rendered useless after that because she broke all the spokes and paid the ultimate penalty of <laughs> winning the game for her team but losing the umbrella. All right, our number one bit of footage. And look, if you're an old Fitzroy fan, probably best you look away now because this, I wouldn't say this is a famous moment. This is an infamous moment. The fix was in. This is the only time that I've ever seen umpiring definitely cost a team a game of football. Now, there's a couple of dodgy frees even before the clip we're about to throw to but to give you an idea how bad it was have a listen to Peter McKenna's commentary Ah, 30 seconds remaining Jarman he's got to go long he he go out there? he's gone to Paul Roos who couldn't take the mark but Roos tries to bottle it up now to hold it oh, oh, it no. oh this is murder oh. absolute murder no it's on Peter oh, they all come know on the... Jamison is going to take the ball. He's if, kicked two goals. If they win this game, it's been pinched. Absolutely stolen. Is he going to torpedo punt? No. The siren has gone. The siren has gone. This kick, if it's a goal, will win the match for the Crows. From 47 it, metres. It'll make the distance. Oh, he's kicked it. They've stolen it. It's a goal. Absolute murder. Absolute murder. Unbelievable finish. Oh. I didn't even barrack for the Roars. I nearly put my foot through the TV that night. Now, that last free kick, seriously, that's Stephen Paxman who gets penalised. First of all, Paul Roos should have got a free kick I for holding think, the I man. Think, I don't think he should have. Well, I think he should have. Rod Jamison gave away a free kick. Then he awards a crap free kick, but he awards it to the wrong bloke. I was trying to remember who number eight for Adelaide was. Do you Cook. remember who it was? One of the Cooks. Uh, one of the exam... Um, um, one of the Jarmans? No, 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 no. no. Um, played for a Bond. Oh, well, someone texts in and tells oh, us. Was it a Bond? He should have taken... Troy, Troy Bond? Could or? have been. He should have taken the free kick, not only Rod Jamison. Yeah, oh, the whole thing, there were three free kicks before then. The fix was in. Robert Shaw was coach for Fitzroy, and he claims that um, there was a conspiracy against him, of course, because of his time in Adelaide. And I love Peter McKenna's contrary. It was a disgrace! Well, that's it for Rounds of Our Lives. Jeez, I love that segment. Time for another break now. When we come back, it's Twitter time, with or without the trolling, as we take your footy questions and give you what we think will suffice for answers. You brought little Toby McKenzie in there for a first game. How do you think he played? I thought he was very poor. Right. A bit harsh. Yeah. Was that, uh, we had no what? kicks. 
his man kicked four goals. So how do you think he played? Well, I think he played. He did play on Ben oh, Griffiths. Sorry. He played on Ben Griffiths. There's a 90 kilo difference. Griffiths, could he? Well, that's why he had to move him forward. So no, I thought he was very poor. Harsh. Thanks for joining us here on Footyology. It's your part of the show now. Send Finey and I your footy questions every week using the Footyology hashtag, and we'll not only answer them, but maybe even get your name right. It's tweets answered by tweets on keyboard Q&A. Don't start. You're going to give me something about how you're not a twit, right? No, I've, I've, can I, I've just got one on my phone. Another one? Yeah. Okay, quick. It's from Mark Fine to Mark Fine. Yeah. And it said, did you just say that Fitzroy got harshly dealt with because of Shorey's time in Adelaide? You're a moron because he coached Fitzroy before Adelaide, so that doesn't make sense. <laughs> okay. Well, a lot of what we say on this show doesn't make sense, but we go with it. You're, a rude, you're rude, Mark Fine. Don't, don't now, attack Now, you, well, how long has your Twitter exile lasted now? You, you haven't, still haven't seen another one, have you? No. This is a disgrace. Like, this is a whole segment based on Twitter and you're not even on it. I'm building up... I'm, I know people want me to send it, so I've started to feel that the demand is creating interest. You're last on the footyology credibility ladder. Yes. Our so. in-house credibility ladder. Okay. Fortunately, we have plenty of tweets to get us through. So read. you read the names, I'll read the tweet. Phineas, that is really small. Who yeah, is it? Phineas Meir. Who asks, who's the best recycled player in the AFL this year? Mm. You got some? Nope. I, I do. <laughs> okay, go on. Well, Tim Membry's doing well at St Kilda. He's come in and done Well, by well. this year, does he mean newly arrived? Or? I knew this... Oh. No, let's pretend he's not and make it yeah. easier. Tim Membry, yeah, he's been great. He's been good. Um, I think, though, the best is Shane Biggs at the Bulldogs. He was yeah. a... and he, he would have finished his league career with three games for Sydney, unloved, unheard of and unknown. Remember Biggs, the trade robber? Well, you know, he is a very good footballer. He's filled in the breach with halfback flank. Judy's being called upon. No Murphy, Joe Hennison. Suckling was out for a while. Easter Wood's out now. But he also runs through the centre, kicked a beautiful set shot goal on the weekend. Okay. And Hamlin came in, ex a long player and did well. Uh, Bulldogs flexibility, we'll, I'll give you that one. Okay, next tweet. I'm going to zip through these. Twitter's a fast medium. Who's this from? The Tail. Who asks, Eagles have not beaten a top eight side or lost to a bottom ten side. <laughs> Same as two years ago. Was last year a one-off? Are they overrated? Uh, pff, stay tuned for my rant. I, I'm not ranting on them. They're not overrated. They're underachievers. They got. I think they've got players that together should be performing better. But for some reason, there's a lack of there's a lack of ability to fight out of hard situations. You, you're that was sent in by the tail. They don't have one that wags. Very good. Next tweet, please. And it's from Wayne O'Bro. Okay, is Dagoe? the biggest squeeb in the AFL, Ooh, harsh, runs around, is it half-arsed? Half-armed. Oh, whoops. Half-armed, hanging out the back. Gee, that's tough. Well, I've got to admit, he's disappeared. He's really got the... He's not a squib though. I was going to say... I don't, I don't think he's... Squib implies gutlessness. Yeah. It's a, it's a major accusation. Yeah. No, I... I I don't like the term squib because you've got to be... I umpire footy. You've got to be so courageous to play that game at every level. Um, okay, how about invisible? Has he fallen off the face of the earth? Well, he's definitely having... Is it second year blows? He's only a kid. Uh, no, I don't think he's the biggest disappointment in the competition, if that's what you're getting at. No, it uh, could be a bit harsh, but... you know, it's Jamie not... Bennell's the most disappointing player in the AFL. Where's he played? Well, he played last year in the seniors at West Coast and had a pretty good season. Mm. Last week... He was moderate in the waffle reserves. Send me a tweet about it. He's okay. been dropped from, from his waffle team. Yeah, no, that's not waf good. Waffle too. Who's this one from? This is from Matthew. You read this tweet. Okay. Rowan Conley. Should journos who suggest Frio were tanking and had suspect selections apologise? Not referring to yourself. Uh, yes, they should, because it was rubbish then and it's obviously rubbish now. That's, that, and that Anybody and who thought they were tanking or would, would be tanking doesn't have a feel for the game. And led to that ridiculous suggestion that neither Essendon nor Fremantle should try to win last week. Essendon don't need to not try to win. 
That might be a dug, double negative. We're treating it with the contempt it, it deserves. Not Absolute the tweet, contempt. but the suggestion. Yeah. Okay, contempt. you read this one. My eyesight's gone. Uh, this is from Glenn Dunn. It says, Hang on. Rowan, Con uh, Rowan underscore Connolly. Ando. Who's Ando? I don't know. You've beaten Essendon and Brisbane. Not getting ahead of yourself, are you? Next four will tell. Obviously, you're about Fremantle. Okay. You've beaten... Okay, well, we've established Ando Barracks for uh, Fremantle and he's getting ahead of himself. But who is Ando? Perhaps we've got another tweet that might reveal who Ando is. Anyone? Tweet? No? I don't know Ando. But I know that there were some good signs for Fremantle. Sounds like a phone conversation that probably should have been conducted in private. Uh, look, if you want to talk to your mates, please don't do it on our show. Just exchange phone numbers. Use your phone for phone calls. That's what they were made for. But he wants to talk about Freo. Well, I don't know. Who's Ando? I don't know who Ando is. But What's I do name? know that... Fr what day is it? I do know that Freo have beaten moderate opponents, but in doing so... Tabernet has come... Look, those games by Tabernet and Weller, I reckon, are uh, relevant. And I think they'll prove to be significant in the weeks and years to come. They can both play and will take a great deal of confidence out of uh, five apiece. They're looking a lot better. OK, last tweet. I'm told we have a last tweet. Go it's, and read it, that one it's too. From, it's from Ando. Stop criticising me and my mate. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's from Michael. Yeah, who asks? Um, Matthew SMS uh, Matthew tweeted earlier has John and Luke contacted you no why did Carlton start to listen to Jared Healy and Freo ignore him no no idea what you're talking about there um, what did Jared Healy say about Carlton I don't know I know he's Fremantle's number one ticket holder good old Jared he loves Fremantle doesn't he so why would Fremantle ignore him remember who their old number one ticket holder was Fremantle, Fremantle. who was it until an incident against Carlton. Rove McManus. And he tossed the coin yeah. and he went to shake the Carlton captain's hand and then he thought it'd be really clever to pull it away. Oh, really? Yeah. You know, in the middle of the ground before, I think, oh, a no, final. I don't remember that. Yeah. He was Sean McManus's cousin. cousin. Yeah, a right. Right piece of smart artery. But, but have a guess where he started his career? On this You're very... You're sitting on it. On this very... I'm sitting on Rove McManus's career. Jeez, Rove, I thought you were going a bit better than that. All right, that's it. Is for it comfortable? Q uh, what, Rove's career? Hang on, I've got something for us. He's probably to made a little bit more of his than mine. I've got something for us. Yeah, go on. Uh, how about the Daniel Menzel incident? I mean, there's talk about the yeah. integrity of the ground, yeah. slippery conditions, and also that non-turf bit that... Well, if you think that was dangerous, at the Dusseldorf Fashion Week, they've got this beautiful model, Kinwa Habsburg. She had an enormous amount of problems. Quinoa. Quinoa. So you ate quinoa. Well, you would. The, the <laughs> I cannot believe you said that. Go on. You would eat it. It's good for you. Oh, yeah. We go on. Um, anyhow, if you think the surface is bad at Etihad, A, the surface is terrible at the, at the Dusseldorf Fashion Week and the boundary line way too close to the water feature. Have a look at this. Uh -huh. How do you look? Uh, welcome back. Look, Fanny, I'm a bit worried about Quinoa. Is she okay? That no, was no, pretty serious. It was. It was a serious injury. She's not expected to be right until the Paris Fashion Week. And she's going to have to come back through the Target catalogues and stuff because she's just a model now, not a supermodel. <laughs> so it's going to be a long way back to supermodel for her. <laughs> All right. Well, this is the tightest premiership race for years. And the race of football respectability is no less frantic. Teams don't just yearn for victory, they yearn for love and affection. On the footyology, credibility ladder. There's your little bobbling head. They're actually going to start selling them in shops soon. My bobbleheads? Yeah. You put them on your dashboard and everything. Yeah, well, that'll, AFL that, licensed? Or? That, that'll cause, <laughs> AFL licensed. That'll yeah. cause more <laughs> rear-ending than a wet road. <laughs> <laughs> That's <Really>? funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what, what's going on there? I, I did my notes on the back of... That's your credibility ladder. Can you hold that up for the cameras? That's, that's probably Can we get a close-up on that? That's probably the end of my... Other way around. That's Any the chance? end of my credibility. That's the ladder. So this, this is Mark Fine's show preparation, everyone. <laughs> he writes his notes on the back of an old packet of Jack Link's beef jerky. And I know for a fact that they're an SEN sponsor, so he only gets that beef jerky because they're sponsoring the show. What have you been reduced to, Mark Fine? 
we can't all have jobs with newspapers and radio stations. Well, the two of us won't have one for very <laughs> long at all, so get back to you on Get that ready one. to eat beef jerky. Uh, we're going to go on. Uh, I like beef jerky, so uh, maybe Jack Winks can throw us a, a gig. Anyway, you're last on the credibility ladder. Let's get into it. I've made an executive decision yet again for about a 12th <laughs> week in a row. Number one team without any shadow of doubt, GWS. Fantastic win over the Swans. That was their coming of age. Uh, they are a serious September player. Anyone got any problems with that? Yep. I would have what argued Adelaide. I reckon Adelaide. Adelaide become a genuine premiership contender by beating last year's runners-up, this year's premiership favourites pre-season in Perth. Well, GWS have just knocked off the most consistent side in the competition. What else can they do? Tippett got injured during the game. So did Nat Nui. Hmm. Don't mind Okay, so you reckon Adelaide? Line ball. Line what do ball. you reckon? Yeah, I was going for Adelaide. Yeah, well, you both get stuff because it's <laughs> GWS and I've already walked it in. But uh, I'll give you a concession. Adelaide can go second. Yep. Although, I reckon coming into the debate with Adelaide, at least worthy of discussion, is Geelong. Great win over yep. North. Only one previous loss to the this is like This is like doing the credibility ladder with that guy from Zimbabwe. Did Robert Mugabe. Yeah, Robert Mugabe. You're, yeah. you're, you're a dictator, mate. Well, I am, if you're going to turn up 10 minutes before the show starts. Actually, it was at least 20 today. Thank you. Uh, next in the discussion is Western Bulldogs. Have you got them on your Jack Winks beef jerky packet? I have them fifth. Fifth? Yep. Okay. Yep, no, they're right up there. Okay. Just going over well, they're not fifth, they're fourth. Yep. How about St Kilda? St, uh, St. Kilda, St. Kilda St. I've St. got Kilda. fifth. Great win. I oh. thought St Kilda Bulldogs, yeah, pretty close. Yeah, Bulldogs beat uh, uh, a port on a good day at away from home. Yep. But St Kilda were coming back playing for their credibility. The, the coach had put it on the line. Yeah, that's true. Bounce no, back or Only beat Carlton, though. Yeah, true. Let's ask a Carlton fan. Terrible day for the Blues. You know you know what Carlton looked like against St Kilda? Carlton. Um, of last year. <laughs> <laughs> Carlton of the last 15 years. Uh, we shouldn't laugh. Hi, Beric for Essendon. Uh, next, for um, coming in underneath the Saints, I reckon Melbourne. Good win over the Pies. OK, yeah. the Pies. But it was I, a big start. I had them higher. Yeah. Because Did of you? all the historical yeah. relevance. Yeah, no, but you're, you're probably right. History yeah. is not really what this is about. No, look, I'd be prepared to concede it too if we didn't have to lock this in at least half an hour before we go to air. Okay. When we get quicker to react, we'll, uh, we'll be able to change up a bit more. Uh, next, I've got... Uh, I said that very quietly, didn't I? Like Dermot, Dermot Barrett, and when he says something important, his voice goes quite quiet. Hawthorne next, speaking of Dermot Barrett. I will do it like... Ron Barassi. <laughs> it should be Richmond. Hurry up, we're here. No, well, Bar Barassi, had to, Barassi just paused between them. Yeah. Come on, what is it? It must be important. He's pausing again. Yeah. I well, like. Hurry up. Twisties, he would say. Okay. No, anyway, I've got Richmond. Let's get through this. All right, Hawthorne <laughs> next. Uh, hang on, hang on. Where's Richmond? Uh, uh, they're down the bottom. They're always down the bottom. They only beat the Suns. No, we're getting to them. Fremantle Gosh. next in oh. Melbourne. Made what? short work of Brisbane. Okay, next I've got... I've got a loser before Richmond. What? I thought Port Adelaide were pretty strong against the Bulldogs. Yep. Could have won the game. Right at Richmond have beaten Gold Coast at the MCG. Yeah. Gold Coast have got half a team out. No, they don't. They had a lot of yeah, their no, team no. back. Oh, they're Gold Coast. Fine. Come on. You beat Gold but Coast they, they by a kick the... at the MCG. Yeah, but as the game unfolded, it was actually a very good win in the finish. Did come from behind, yeah. They were three yeah, goals yeah, down yeah. with the with the, they would have been in the Collingwood hot seat. They would have been absolutely torn apart. That was a great finish by Dustin Martin. That was Plus, the sort of thing yeah. that Richmond of the early nineteen nineties would have said. Celebrating a win over a, an ordinary side at home. Game they should have won. You're outvoted. Okay, next oh, Gold Coast. Mr. Mugabe. <laughs> Having said that Richmond were no good. We, we're putting Gold Coast next because by their... So did I. ...admittedly low standards, that was a pretty good performance. North Melbourne next. Have some excuses. Lost Cunnington, lost Swallow. Uh, Atley got yeah. injured. Dal Santo got injured. Goldstein no midfield. Yeah. Goldstein yeah, struggling sorry, a bit. Yeah, yeah. So I, I just hope these yeah. are all genuine injuries because none of them... All players are expected to play this week. Mm. And I don't like... It. There's a bit of a, a, a smell of uh, losers limp with a couple of those. Hopefully I'm wrong. You hate North Melbourne, Mark Fine. I uh, do not. <coughs> you do. I just thought I'd set you up. Uh, next, Sydney, ordinary, smashed in the finish against GWS. Carlton, very ordinary, lucky not to be lower. Bottom four, in order. West Coast, 
Yes, I had them bottom four. Lost at home. Stink. Yes. No good. Well, I didn't score in the last quarter. Yep, first time they've never scored in a quarter at home. And there we go, you see the ladder coming up now. Collingwood next. I had Essendon. Uh, Essendon above Collingwood. For yeah, you. But, but swap either of them. Yeah, I'm yeah, both assuming the their traditional stink- places in the credibility ladder. The super stinkers. And the super stinkers. Brisbane. I never, thought, pop I never yeah. thought I would ever say this line, but they are doing the Brisbane Bears and the 96 Fitzroy team a disservice now. They are very, very ordinary. In terms indeed. of credibility this week, though, you could argue the Eagles could be bottom. Really? Yeah, well, I could not the, argue the lines that. The lines simply are no good. Essendon's no good. Well, we I'm, know uh, where the pies well, are at. This, well, is a, this supposedly was a team that's going to finish top no, four. No, I agree. Years. I agree. And to that end, I think I'm going to change tack and make them the subject of my rant, which is coming up very the shortly. Rant off. Rant. Do you want to do the throw to the <laughs> you rant off today, the, yeah, do Come the on. Yours, no, go, on yours. go on, have no, a go. All right, thanks for joining us. Any final words of wisdom? None this week, I'm bereft. Let okay. it be. <laughs> Let it be. Good song by the Beatles. Time for our final break now. Don't go away because we're feeling extra grumpy this week. And you know what that means. It means a couple of minutes of barely coherent rage from two blokes who should know better. Is Maria Sharapova playing for the women's team next year? Um, I don't think so, no. Um, at this stage, that's all clear. Welcome back. Well, we're heading towards the buy rounds of the AFL season. That might mean a week off for the players, but there's never a week off for Finey and I when it comes to unleashing the inner demons that lurk within our tortured souls. Fasten your seatbelts, put in some earplugs, because it's time for the footyology rant off. Okay, no messing around. Channel your anger. Let rip. I'm going to count you in now. Three, two, one. Rant. Two teams exhibited atrocious selection skills on the weekend. Both paid the penalty and both deserve to be publicly slated. Essendon decided that their ruck combination, one of the few things that works at the club this year, of Lewenberg, given a bit of a spell by Danaher, needed the help of a formerly retired Melbourne footballer who hadn't played any senior football for the last year and a half anyhow. They were rushing in the big Russian. And when he had his first shot at goal, I think they might have regretted it. This slow forward line was made slower by the treacly Mark Jamar, whose efforts in the ruck and up forward were reminiscent of the very, very worst of Ricky Mott. Collingwood were inspired, though. Mason Cox was doing a good job in the second ruck, helping Grundy around the ground. Why not bring in wits? Well, the people who selected wits were wits. Did wits, dip wits? No, I won't say the next word. But they certainly were wits. Imagine adding him to a side that is so slow, they're getting outpaced by the moving shadows of the towers at the MCG. It failed dismally, both teams got thrashed, and it only goes to show that sometimes the fans are smarter than you that run the club. Very good. Yeah, no, I, and I agree, I'm drafting you, hereby draft you onto the Essendon selection panel for the rest of the season. Oh, uh, Ricky Moff, he was my favourite. Yes, no, that, that went down very well. OK, count me in. Three, two, and I'll give you a one. Thank you. What's going on in Perth, Finey? First, Fremantle don't turn up for half a season, and now West Coast goes from grand finalists to a team with about as much fibre as a bowl of crappy breakfast cereal. All season, the Eagles have been beating up a weak teams at home and turning it up when they play away. Then they finally play a decent team on their own patch and head off to Rottnest Island for holidays at three-quarter time. That's the trouble with WA. There's too many distractions. The place is so bloody big it takes half a news bulletin just to read the weather report. But talk about insular, you get a bigger worldview in the confessional room on a series of Big Brother and about as much intellect. You can see it in the players. They're all legends in their own lunchbox. Check out the hair on Sherrod Wellingham, Chris Maston and Will Schofield for starters. Guys, if you want buns, go to Baker's Delight. Maston's got tats in so many places he probably does that joke about welcome to Jamaica, have a nice day. Well, WA doesn't measure up quite so well on your old fellow though, does it Chris? Darling, schmarling. Redden, red faces for the recruiters. Lacra, lacrat. Seriously, West Coast, if you want to be taken seriously, man up a bit and stop wheeling out that sickly yellow jumper from the 1980s. It's got about as much credibility as Alan Bond, even before he did those swan lager ads. You know, you're getting into, stuck into teams a lot. Yeah. You're a journal. Just remember, there's a life beyond this TV program. Don't make enemies. There's a good journalistic cliche, Finey. Without fear or favour. Okay, I favoured mine there, and if you favoured mine, voting is simple. 
This week, go to either Coles or Woolworths or Safeway, create a diversion by asking the manager what is the overseas ownership content of the business, he'll run around in a complete panic, get to the soup aisle and reconfigure the soup cans to read Rocco or Finey. Don't use tomato soup for me, it makes me gag. What could be simpler than that, I ask you. And it's fun. Yep. But, no. I, but I cannot have tomato soup or vomit. Your, your voting systems are superb. That's it for this week. Thanks for joining us again. We're on every Tuesday at 12 p.m. on YouTube, 7.30 p.m. on Channel 31, and now every Thursday at 9.30 p.m. on Foxtel's Aurora. By next week, we might even have a deal with our Jazeera stitched up. That'll put ISIS in their place. And remember, folks, like John and Paul put it in the Beatles' indecipherable classic, Come Together, he wear no shoe shine, he got toe jam football. He got monkey finger, he shoot Coca-Cola. He say, I know you, you know me. And that makes about as much sense as footyology. See you next week.